Okay, I'm going to share with you a little bit on nonlinear transformations of random variables. Again, a probability calculus challenge, really, but something which is important to us in statistics. If we want to prove, for instance, why the t-distribution becomes a t-distribution and why the uh, chi-square, the sample variance, for instance, behaves like a chi-square distribution, to be able to prove something like this, to be able to actually find these important sampling distributions, we need to be able to deal with nonlinear transformations. Because like the variance, in the variance you square the x's, for instance. And what about the t-statistic? The t-statistic, you take a mean and then you divide by the square root of the squared thing, sum of squared. So it's a rather, so you have the quotient of thing, you have a square root, you have a square, you have a lot of nonlinear stuff going on. So we need to be able to do this. Now, I'm going to do it very briefly, so if you really want to dig into it, you should take a probability calculus course. But here, is some of, here are some of the ideas. Um, first of all, a very basic principle. In order to find distributions uh, as a function of something else is the following that we should remember. The distribution is characterized by the distribution function. Distribution function is the probability that the random variable y is less than or equal to small y. So this describes, for instance, a distribution. And um, this, at the same time, this means that if we have the distribution function, we could also find the density function by taking the derivative of the distribution function. So these are basic relations between the distribution function and the density functions that we can use sometimes to find distributions of transformation of things. For instance, we are going to do a little exercise here to show one important um, nonlinear transformation in a uh, statistics context. Namely, what if we are interested in the distribution of, generally speaking, of uh, y equaling x squared. So we have a nonlinear transformation, which is the square transformation. We do that a lot, for instance, in variances. Let's just consider this basic uh, challenge here. How should we find that in a very uh, generic way? We could also say, what is really the density function here? And in a way, we should already now realize that when we study the square of something, it only makes sense to consider density function in positive values because there is no chance it can ever be negative. So we work on the positive scale. Now, let me give you this an idea of how sometimes this very general principle can be used to find such uh, things here. We should be interested in finding the distribution function of y. At least if we can do that, we could deduce the density afterwards. The distribution function is the probability of being less than or equal to y. Now, I will rephrase y is a function of x. So what is the event that y is smaller than, capital Y is smaller than small y, I would say that is the same that the absolute value of x is smaller than square root of y. So now I change, that's the idea here. If I am able to at least to change the probability event in being expressed in terms of y to being expressed in terms of x, I might have a chance to actually complete this exercise because I can be more detailed here and say this is the same as saying that x should be in between minus square root y and plus square root y. I would say that's the same thing. And then I can do something which we've done a lot, I would say previously in simple calculations. I could express it as the probability of x being smaller than square root y, that is the first part here, actually, the, the right-hand part. And then I subtract the probability of x being smaller than or equal 
minus y, then I remove the remaining part and I get the same probability. Uh, which is then, which I hope you can recognize then if I make it be explicit, this is the density function of x, sorry, the distribution function of x evaluated in square root y, and the distribution function of x evaluated in minus square root y. Having done that, I could find the density function of y now by doing the derivative of the distribution function, which would then be taking the derivative of this one. How do I take the derivative of such a composite function? I use basic rules for finding derivatives. I find the derivatives of the inner function times the derivative of the outer function evaluated in the inner function. So the derivative of square root y, you would have to recap what that is, and that is actually 1 over 2 square root y, that's the derivative of square root y, times the derivative of the distribution function of x, which is the density function of x, evaluated in square root y. Then I have a minus and a minus, so altogether it becomes a plus when I take the derivative again of square root y with a minus, combined with a minus, and then it's a density function of x now evaluated in minus square root y. And in a way, I have now found for general distributions, you could say this is a pretty general thing I've done here, that now for any kind of distribution of x, the way to come, the way to get the distribution, the density function of y, would be to use the density function of x in this way. So there's a very general rule that applies to any distribution of x here. Now let us apply this rule in a situation that is important for us many times. What if, what if we assume that x is actually standard normal distributive? So we assume that x is standard normal, and I'd like to know the distribution, the density function of the square of x. Then I would apply, this means that f of x in x is also this function that we sometimes call phi of x, which is the standard normal density function, square root 2 pi uh, e to minus 1 over 2 um, x squared. That's and by the way, this is then equal to phi of minus x because that is the symmetric density function, this one. If we apply that for our general formula up here with the standard normal density playing the role as fx, due to the symmetry, actually the two terms becomes the same. And altogether, I would have 1 over square root y times the standard normal density applied to square root y. Actually, that is the density of the square of this. And now we could write this out and say y to the minus half. If you could, we could say 2 pi to minus 1 half. That's the, and we could say e to minus half y. And then we would have to dig into our formula book uh, which I'll not do, I would say, to say, aha, again, aha, this density actually is exactly the density of the chi-square 1, also sometimes called the gamma 1 half 2 distribution. So here I have proved that the square of the standard normal becomes a chi-square 1 distribution. Of course, you have to be able to recognize this as the density of the chi-square 1 distribution to finish this argument. Now, this was a nice proof. We need to have something more general, actually, to work for us. We need to be able to solve a more general situation, at least in some sense. What if we are interested in some other, not necessarily the square, but just any kind of function 
g of x, actually not any kind of function. I'm going to, for this part, assume that it's a so-called unique or one-to-one -one function or monotonely either uh, increasing or decreasing um, for the argument to come, because then if I'm interested in the distribution function of such a y, I can do to the monotonicity or the one-to-one -one feature of the function, I can express the probability of y, capital Y being less than small y, can be expressed in terms of x by using the inverse of the g function, right? By saying that That's, that's how from before we came from the square to the square root, which was then the inverse. Now it's, uh, but th then we had another uh, challenge before because the square was actually not one to one. Uh, but now we assume one to one and we can express the important probability that we're interested in in terms of x by using the inverse function. And uh, sometimes, in, at least in our book here, that would be sometimes expressed. It would just, it's the same. It's just giving a name to this inverse function and calling it W. It's, it's in a way, it's just any function. It's the inverse of function of G. Uh, but it can be seen that uh, if we take this notation then used in, in, in our book here, we will express it that the distribution function of Y a nonlinear function of x given by the g function comes as the distribution function of x applied to the inverse function, inverse of g. This means we can now deduce the density function of y by a, um, taking the derivative of this one and it appears that the right thing to do is to take not only the derivative, but the absolute value of this inner function times the derivative of capital F of x, which is the density, and then still apply it to the same inverse function. Here is the general rule for finding density function for a nonlinear function of something else, basically what you do is that you need, when you have the g function, you need to be able to invert that function, and then you take the derivative of this inverse function, and then when you have those two, the inverse and the derivative of the inverse, you have the transformation formula for nonlinear functions. So here's the distribution of y given by the distribution of x through the nonlinear function. Uh, through the inverse of the nonlinear function g. And um, this is actually a general rule that we can apply. Then I want to sh share one final thing which is important to us that actually falls a bit outside the two things that I've mentioned here. What if, and we need to deal with that actually also, that's why I take it up. What if what we're interested in is a quotient between two things. That is, we want the distribution of y divided by x, and we need that for the t distribution, actually. I'll, I'll get back to that in a later um, video. What if we are interested in what is known as the quotient of two random variables, again, still independent random variables? Actually, if you think about it, now z here, the quotient, is a function of two random variables. And actually, there exists also a multivariate, multivariate version exists of such a transformation rule using multivariate Jacobians and multivariate derivatives and things like that. I'm not going to write this up here. It becomes too, too technical. But such a rule could be applied here. Now, I will just give you the result, as is actually also given in the book, the basic uh, sort of rule for finding the density of y over x, taken in z, comes here. That is that we should 
This is a bit like the convolution formula from my lecture on sums of random variables. Um, we should take the numerical absolute value of x times the density of x applied in x times the density of y applied in x set dx, actually. And that is as far as I will take it. I'm not going to prove this formula to you. It can be proved along these forms of uh, general transformation, uh, multivariate transformation rule. But I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to give that to you because we need actually also this uh, quotient rule. How can we find the distribution of a quotient? Well, here is the formal rule, and I'm going to apply that in later videos. Thank you.